Hello YouTubers, this is The Scribe and thank you for watching this YouTube video. Right, so I want to talk about a band called Red Said Fred. They were very popular in the early 90s. You wouldn't believe just how popular they were. In the 90s, everybody was talking about them. I first came across them when they made the song I'm Too Sexy for my my cat and my dog and my, my girlfriend, I'm too sexy for this life. <laughs> Just let me slurp some more black wine. And it was, I think it was after Tomorrow's World, there was a program that used to be on TV called Tomorrow's World, and I was going to this horrible thing called St. John's Ambulance. I hated every moment of it. It bored me to death. I mean, you used to have to wear these like really fluffy, sticky kind of jumpers, like woolly jumpers, because uh, the you know the people there you know thought it was a great idea to torture the kids with itchy clothing, and you know, right? Said Fred came on TV and they were singing, "I'm too sexy for my shirt" and all this, and you know. Later on, the the people who were running this cult, St. John's Ambulance, I mean, not all of St. John's Ambulance is a cult, of course, I don't mean that, but the people who were running this particular place came downstairs and they saw us all watching this in the, the kind of basement they had after, after the course, you know, was finishing for the day. There was a place we went downstairs and we would watch TV, we would play snooker and stuff while we're itching ourselves to death with these jumpers. And they saw us watching this this music video and they said, This is satanic. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. They actually went fucking crazy. They thought, you know, they would go release the demons of hell upon earth. And, you know, I was laughing my head off. <laughs> for some reason the the guy who was running St. John's Ambulance says this is really bad these people are just evil I mean what the <laughs> fuck you know just because you know he's he's uh, taking his dress off and you know dancing and you know in front of some girls and stuff like that maybe maybe the guy was jealous I don't know maybe he had some you know he had some hots for the 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 men who were actually making that music video I should imagine he did but anyway, the, they were popular in the 90s and the religious cults were after them. Do you know like they're after J.K. Rowling now and some other people? They were really after these guys because they were singing like dirty songs. <laughs> in some ways, yeah, I, I mean, it wasn't as bad as it is today. It wasn't like uh, Sam Smith or anything like that. It was just like fun. And they also... You know, nobody can sing like that nowadays because there's too much soy in our diets. I mean, everybody has a high pitched, squeaky voice, well, pretty much like myself, <laughs> because of all the soy that we eat. So yeah, they were popular back then, and they that was in the early 90s, and I think I must have been like 13, 12 years old or something like that at the time, because I was born in like 78, and you know, great times. I hated every moment of it. <laughs> so anyway, they were in the early two thousands. They also became popular in America. So it took like a ten year period before they reached with exactly the same song popularity again in America. And then they sort of enjoyed the their life afterwards. And then in 2020, you remember that crazy time when everybody was fearing for their life because of a virus that, you know, might kill you in a one in a million chance that it might actually do it. You remember that time? And then also the government said, you got to take this injection, you know, this toilet cleaner injection where they, they mix drugs in a bog or something like that. And they were sticking it in people's arms, and they, you know, everybody was just going in for it and saying, "Yeah, just stick me with your fucking drugs," you know, like drug addicts. And then they, you know, 
because the first one allegedly didn't work, even though they didn't die, and even though the people who didn't take it didn't die, the government said, well, you know, it didn't work. Do you remember that? And they said, well, you've got to take some more. So they mixed some more using some fucking crabs from the ocean or something like that people were highly allergic to, and they started to inject it in other people. And then people started having reactions to it. And the other people who didn't take it didn't. And everybody got angry at the people who didn't take it. And then <laughs> they said, well, that didn't work. you got to take some more. So the government made even more drugs. Well, actually, a vaccine company. They called us lot anti-vaxxers or something like that. And then they took it. And then they started to, you know, pass away with it, unfortunately. Not everybody, but I mean, some of them did. And then they started blaming the people who didn't take it who weren't affected by it. <laughs> Crazy times. Well, back then, there was very few people speaking out for us, and I have to thank them for this, because it, I think it's important that one of the few bands out there who had the nerve to stand up to government, because the government were very frightening at the time. They were, you know, closing down businesses, they were putting people away, they were charging people tens of thousands of pounds. Who were, you know, questioning the narrative or having parties. Just let me slurp some more black wine in celebration. <laughs> and there was very few people who would actually stand up to them. Even Oasis, you know, Oasis. I mean, you you imagine like Noel Gallagher and all that. Yeah, he did say something. But it wasn't that great. I mean, it was just like one sentence. Thanks for the help. I mean, that's so naive and it's also so vague. Yeah, maybe this is not right. <laughs> okay, great. But he kept his mouth shut for the rest of it. And so did the rest of the band. Uh, however, the band for Right Said Fred never kept their mouth shut. They spoke out online. They spoke out on their pages. They actually went to these protests uh, at risk of their own safety, right, and at risk of their own um, being fired, etc., they went and joined in with them, and you know helped out. Well, you have to have some balls to do that, and not everybody actually did that. And there's other, there's another guy who did it as well. There was somebody who was running another pop group. What were they called? I think the ones who sang Leave Me Bradley or something like that. And there was another one um, who sang You've Got the Fear. I think he's somebody called Brown. Or, yeah, I think he's he's a solo singer called Brown or something like that. I can't remember his first name. That's a bit sad. Yeah, but these, these are three bands that actually stood up for the people so I need to make sure I actually get the names right later when I drop it down below and because of that because people actually stood up for the people who didn't want to take the vaccines the people who thought that the lockdowns were just crap and bullshit we actually pushed back that system because as they said it's easy enough to lose your freedom but once you've lost it, it's very, very difficult to get back because governments enjoy, they actually enjoy taking your freedoms away. They actually enjoy it and they get off on it. Look what happened in New Zealand. Look at that, that creature that said, uh, we're going to put you away in prisons and stuff like that until you take it. We're going to keep you away in you know camps. And if you don't take it, then we'll just keep you there even longer. All right. so that's that's a good thing about them and it's something I thought was worth mentioning because most people have not mentioned the people who stood up for the the minority groups and I'm not even sure how much of a minority we were back then I think well when, when I was walking around during the lockdowns uh, I didn't wear a mask and when I went into the, the shopping centres, uh, I kept my distance from people who didn't want to be near me, of course. I mean, I'm not going to be coughing and splutting. 
And also, I do believe that if people are coughing, they shouldn't really be going into crowded places in the first place. I always found that I always find that very rude for people to go into places when they've got a severe cold. And that yet you see people who were wearing a mask doing exactly that later on when all the lockdowns cleared up. Because quite literally, what they're doing is virtue signaling. That's all they're doing. So yeah, I, I wasn't wearing, I didn't wear a mask and I just said to the, you know, the people who were doing the security, I said, I'm exempt, right? And the reason why I was doing that at the time is because what I figured is that if people saw others daring to not wear a mask, then they also would do exactly the same thing. And we, it sort of did work back then. And it, it you know, people tend to copy each other. Because it's all it's it, it it's all kind of like a game to the system. They they understand how to play you on a you know mental level. There's actually a a game that they played where they got a woman to stand up. Right, they got one person to stand up, and then somebody came into this like um, doctor practice, and then one person stood up. Everybody looked at them. Nobody did anything. You know, hot, most of the people stood up every time a bell rang, right? And then they would sit down when the bat, you know, the bell went off. So when somebody comes in and then they see everybody stand up, they all copy them because they're following the group. And then when those that group goes one by one by one by one, right? until there's only one person left, that person still stands up. And then when new people are introduced, they'll copy that person. And they found that out. It's same same with the elevator game, right? If you turn around and look at the wall of an elevator, everybody else will turn around and look at it. Because that most people do not think for themselves. They allow other people to think for them. So yeah, it it is important that you know the the people who are um, who do have voices to stand up for the the people who don't. And at least back then, as I, as I was going to say, I don't know if you go about this, I am a little drunk. <laughs> that system where you can make people stand up can also work in reverse. Right, so if they don't see me wearing a mask, even if I've said I'm exempt, other people can do exactly the same thing, and the system broke down. So it can it can be used in a reverse setting, not just in one uh, dimension. It can be used in more dimensions where you can actually trick them to do exactly the opposite of what the government wants them to do. And that's why the the government were doing so many threats because they realised that they're not totally in control. So, yeah, I mean, check that band out because hopefully they start to do very well. I mean, they're, they're not as as big as they used to be. However, they are doing fantastic. And the, the newspaper article said, you know, they're, you know, they made the billionaires or stuff like that. No, 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 they, he, these guys, they bought some, you know, house for like 100 grand in London. And <laughs> it's... Uh, they're saying it's worth 20,000 20, million pounds or something like that. No, okay, okay, whatever. Um, they've done well for themselves and they deserve to have done well for themselves. And then, after all this, they stood up for people. And I, I and other people in my situation and the people in my tribe uh, would have to thank them for that. Thank, thank you to, right, said Fred, and other bands, I think like Martin Brown, is that is is that the band I'm thinking of? And what's the other one? I need to get, I need to remember this this name. Mm. But yeah, thank you to those bands who stood up for people, and who spoke out, and weren't pussies, okay? Because I know some of you out there pretend you are against the system. And you're really not. You know, Pink Floyd were like that. They they go, ooh, we're, 
we're so cool, we're against the system. You know, another brick in the wall. And yet, they're exactly the same kind of breed. When the government said, do what we tell you, they said, do what the government tell you. Th this is the thing. That was the supreme test of character for YouTubers, for people, how they reacted in that situation. And I, I also say, you know, you know, when you're not wearing a mask back in 2020, you know, don't, don't, you sh people shouldn't be rude to each other. So even if you see people wearing a mask and they're having a go at you or saying, why are you not wearing a mask? Uh, the best thing back then to say was, I'm exempt. And then another thing that I noticed people doing is they were very hypervigilant, they were looking around all the time. And when, when, when you walk in, just natural, you look around, you go and buy something, people don't notice you, but if you like, right, people do notice you because you're hyper vigilant, you're looking at them. So if the government ever tries something like this again, act as natural as possible and that'll be better for you, trust me. So thank you guys and thanks for watching this and I'm gonna get drunk. See you later. <laughs> Cheers.